Chapter 8 Little Black Orb It didn't take long for Phoenix to make a light flannel pajama outfit for the night. He almost made it look simple. He was asleep on the living room sofa as Rachel paced in her room. Anastasia was lying in his bed, looking up at the dark fabric of the canopy, reviewing in her mind the evening's events. Sitting up, she turned the nightstand light back on, looking around the room. It was spacious, with a large fireplace on one wall. There were some paintings on the walls, but all were of the sky from the point of view she'd get from flying. Some had a person in the distance of the clouds, but it wasn't clear who it was. There was a large wooden cabinet on the far wall with glass doors. She could see several swords mounted inside. Turning to get out of bed, she bumped her leg on the nightstand. A hard, round, rolling sound came from it. Her curiosity got the best of her. Careful not to make too much noise, she opened the drawer. Inside, there was a pen and a black glass ball that looked like a marble. She picked it up for a closer look. The inside of the marble swirled like a liquid, but it didn't appear to be. Holding it up to the light, it slipped out of her fingers, falling to the hard floor. It rolled across to the middle of the room where it shattered. A large black metal vine erupted from the remnants of the ball. Its tendrils reached out across the room, climbing over everything. Stunned, Anastasia screamed. Phoenix bolted into the room just as the vines were making their way to the bed. Rachel appeared out of the darkness behind him. Surveying the room, she queried. Black orb. He nodded. Phoenix darted across the room, jumping over, under and atop the still growing vines as a large black metal bud began to grow in its center. Once he reached the core of the bar, he spoke in a language unrecognizable to Anastasia. Although the vine's growth stopped, a large metal rose bloomed, illuminating the room with a soft blue glow. Rachel shook her head, returning to her room. Clothes torn and cut from the vine's thorns, Phoenix walked to Anastasia. He picked her up placed her back in bed, tucked her in, and turned the light off. The metal rose gave the room a soft glow by which she could see him walking to the door, stepping over the vines. At the door, he turned and spoke softly. Good night. See you in the morning. I'm really sorry. It was an accident. Don't worry about it. I'll clean it up tomorrow. He then disappeared into the darkness of the living room. She could hear him lying back down on the sofa. She closed her eyes and fell asleep. Anastasia awoke the next morning, the sun coming through the windows, a breakfast tray next to the bed, and the vines gone. The rose was all that remained, centered in the room, a round piece of glass on its petals. A folded set of clothes and toiletries had been placed on the glass. Not feeling hungry for anything, Anastasia got out of bed and proceeded to get changed into the new clothes. Once dressed, she walked to the balcony doors and stepped outside for some fresh air. The sky was a mix of reds and oranges with the rising sun. Then, she heard it coming from the roof. It sounded like metal hitting metal, a struggle, perhaps. A quick glance at the wooden cabinet confirmed one of the swords was missing. She stretched her wings out and flew to the roof, not sure of what she would find. There in front of her was Phoenix blindfolded, wings folded on his back. 
one hand tied behind his back, the missing sword in the other. Rachel was dressed in what looked like light body armor, while Phoenix was in a pair of shorts and a t-shirt. Anastasia landed on the edge of the roof, watching the two as they sparred. Phoenix was doing pretty well, even though Rachel appeared to have the advantage. Clash after clash, the blades struck, sparks exploding with each hit. Phoenix moved with the same grace as in dancing, blocking each blow Rachel tried. Looking closer to the blades, Anastasia noticed that Rachel's sword was severely damaged, while Phoenix's sword remained unmarked. His movements changed swiftly to where he was standing, still facing Anastasia. His sword still blocked every blow Rachel attempted. Phoenix called over to Anastasia, pausing with each strike of the blades. Did you sleep well last night? Yes, I did, considering how um, that happened yesterday. Do you need me to get you back in? to grab some of your belongings. Rachel's bombardment stopped. She raised her voice in disbelief at Phoenix. What? You can't be serious. You barely got out last time. I did get out though. Besides, they won't expect me to return the very next day. And that's because I won't let you. Anastasia interrupted their argument. You don't have to worry about it, Rachel. I don't need anything from there. And even if you did, I wouldn't let him take you back there. It's too dangerous. I agree with you there. I'm sure Agent Frank is doing everything in his power to put up extra security. <laughs> Phoenix placed his sword down on top of one of the building's compressors. A bit thrown off her guard that Anastasia agreed with her, Rachel hit Phoenix in the side, thinking they would continue sparring. A loud ringing sound was emitted from the vibrating blade of the sword as it hit the roof. Both <gasps> Rachel and Anastasia clasped their hands to their mouths in horror as a neat, thin, red line of blood formed around Phoenix's waist. Phoenix spoke with a hint of boredom in his voice. Let me guess, the blade went straight through me this time. Rachel's voice was very shaky with her reply. I'm so sorry. I wasn't paying attention. I thought we were still sparring. I'm really so very sorry. I should have warned you. I'm so sorry. It's okay, Rachel. Really, it is. These things happen. It's really nobody's fault. Phoenix freed his tied-up hand, not realizing how badly the injury was, till his torso fell off his waist half of him on the roof while the other half remained standing. He used both his free hands to remove the blindfold to see tears forming in Rachel's eyes, and Anastasia fainted on the ground. Lightly, Phoenix spoke. She went down when the top half of me fell off the bottom half, right? Uh-huh. Thought so. Phoenix used his arms to lift the top half onto one of the ventilation vents as his legs walked over to the rest of him. The legs sat down next to him, where he proceeded to put them on like a pair of pants. A ring of fire ignited around his waist, connecting both halves. He then stood up and stretched his wings out. Walking over to Rachel, Phoenix took a tissue out of pocket and handed it to her, wrapping an arm around her shoulders. Rachel was trying to fight back her tears when he spoke again. See, when the pressure's on, I could really pull myself together. Rachel laughed lightly, feeling a little better about cutting him in half. You can really bring a guy down to half his size. Phoenix said to her, trying to help her feel better. <laughs> 